TV. Now you know. Welcome to the San Diego County Academic League, featuring the area's best and brightest high school students. They'll be responding to tough questions in a variety of subject areas, from history to literature to science to math and more. It is good to have you with us. Now, if you are watching this on Thursday afternoon, April 24th, 2014, then you're seeing it live on ITV. If you're watching it some other time, don't worry. It's still going to be a great match. I think you'll enjoy it. I'm Clark Anthony. As you may know, San Diego County has four academic leagues. They are divided geographically, north, south, east, and west, which is the San Diego Metro League. Each of those leagues has a championship team, and in the springtime, those four teams get together to determine who the San Diego County champ is for this particular year. That's what we're about today. We have two semifinal matches and then the championship match. You'll see them all live here on ITV. In our second semifinal match, it will be the East County champ taking on the San Diego Metro champ. And in the match you're about to see, it is the North taking on the South. Westview, the North County champ taking on Olympian from the South Bay. Let's move right into the action and say hello to Jane Lutkin, who is the coach for Westview up in the North County. She's taught mathematics for 28 years. She's coached academic for about uh, 11 years. She loves traveling with her family, reading and cooking for her boys. Any special recipes? Well, they are Mexican food fanatics, so I'm anything um, Mexican food, but lately, since they're away at college, I send them their care packages in the mail with any kind of sweets, and then they get devoured by their roommates. And Four El Indio chips probably exactly. would work as well. Now, last year, if you'll recall, Westview beat Olympian for the 2013 championship, and now we have a rematch mm -hmm. of that. It's, it's, it's been a good year. It's been a great year, yeah. A different set of kids. These are not the same kids as last year, but they're a really good caliber of kids, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. That is how it works every year, isn't yeah. it? They, they move on and graduate and go on to all of those schools you're going to tell us about probably right about now, right? Exactly. The world spins, I guess. And <laughs> Introduce your starting lineup from left to right okay. for us, please. My pleasure. The first we have is Alan Zhu. His interests include anything to do with politics, current events, and history. He's a co-founder of our History Bowl. He also enjoys mock trial and photography in his free time, and he plans on studying international politics and finance um, this year at NYU. Next we have Eric. Eric Owen is a senior at Westview. He will be attending Harvard University in the fall to major in human development and regenerative medicine. He's the chief administrator of, of the officer of the nonprofit Catalyst for Success. He specializes in mythology and world history, and he's also one of the co-founders of the History Bowl and the Bee Club at Westview. Our captain tonight is Asim Kayal. He is a senior. He's interested in technology and the physical sciences. He, plan he enjoys playing in quiz bowl and reading. He's going to be attending um, UC Berkeley in the fall, where he will be majoring in electrical engineering and computer science. Ashwin Shriral, he's an integral part of our Westview team when it comes to his quickfire math responses. He enjoys spending time with his family, and he's especially pleased with the Purple Wedding episode of Game of Thrones. He plans also to study electrical engineering this fall at the University of Berkeley. We have Raj Kesavan. He's a senior. He's interested in the philosophy of computational linguistics. I don't know what that means. In his spare time, he enjoys biking around Hourglass Lake, reading plays like The Enchanted Hunters, and building an abacus. In the future, he's going to be studying computer science at Carnegie Mellon University while pursuing an interest in, interest in answering toss-up questions correctly. Good. Well, good luck to uh, you and the Wolverines from Westview. Thank you very much. Thank you. you. Take your spot over there. Let's come over and say hello to Ken Bolton, who, as you probably recall from previous episodes, is the coach for Olympian High School. Uh, Ken is, uh, was uh, county champs two years ago. Olympians were runners-up last year. Ken is in his 20th year of teaching in the Sweetwater District. He teaches AP government. He's been an academic league coach for 15 years. This is his fourth year coaching at Olympian. And Ken, i got to say, in the world of sports, they would say you have a deep bench. I, I have seen you basically sub out an entire team and the, and the students that come in seem to be able to answer just as well. What is your secret for developing such an interest and such a passion in the students? Well, I think the interest comes from just the fact that the kids at our school see how successful our teams have been and kids want to be part of that. Um, so we always are trying to, as you mentioned earlier, we're, we always lose kids every year, so it's important to have new kids who want to continue to do it. So, But it's, it's exciting and it's neat to see a variety of kids get to be successful rather than just having the same five players do it year by year. 
no question. It's always exciting as well to find out all of the various things that are involved in. So would you introduce your starting lineup left to right? I'd be a pleasure. Sitting in seat one, we have sophomore Kyle Morris. He would like to attend either the University of Michigan, uh, UC Berkeley, or Stanford. Uh, he's a huge Chargers fan, and he knows more about James Bond than anybody else I know other than maybe myself, so he's, he's a big fan of, of 007. Uh, he plans to have a career in either economics or climatology or maybe a fusion of those two. Sitting in seat two, we have senior Courtney Coe. She is a four-year member of the Academic League program at Olympian High School. She's one of my first players that I got to coach for four years. Uh, she'll be attending UCSD in the fall, my alma mater. Uh, she's going to be a pre-med major. Uh, she enjoys musicals, and I, you name a song, she knows the, she knows the show. Um, she also is great at piano, and she is a major part of our medical careers club on campus. Sitting in seat three, uh, in the middle seat, we have Thomas Barr, another one of our sophomores. Uh, he would like to attend the U.S. Naval Academy. He comes from a proud Navy family. Um, he is a huge Pittsburgh Steelers fan, much to my chagrin, but you know he has a legitimate reason why he is, because his family's from there. Uh, he is huge on reading history books. I don't know if anybody knows more about war than he does. Um, and he intends on either being engineering or pre-law. He's still trying to make up his mind on what discipline he wants to follow. Sitting in seat four, one of the best players I've ever coached in my career, German Soto, a senior. Uh, he'll be attending MIT in the fall. Um, he is our valedictorian Olympian High School this year. He's the class of 2014 historian, thanks in large part to his passion for photography, and he plans on going into bioengineering. Finally, sitting in seat five, uh, Mark Tolentino, Jr. This is his third year in the program. Comes from a long, prestigious family of decathletes and academic league players at our school. He is intending on going to University of California after his senior year next year. Uh, he's a member of the International Affairs Club on campus, loves to play basketball and guitar in his free time, although he doesn't have much of that with all the studying that he does for our team. And he's also thinking about engineering when he gets out of high school. Excellent. Good luck to you and the team. Thank you very much. You may take your spot over there. Again, remember, one of these two teams will advance to the championship match for 2014 for the San Diego County Academic League champ. Mark Hines is our moderator. Mark is a teacher at Muirlands Middle School, teaches history there, former San Diego City and County Teacher of the Year, finalist for State Teacher of the Year, Walmart Teacher of the Year. But what we like him for best is that he's a terrific moderator. Mark, it's all yours. Thank you, Clark. We have 30 minutes. We'll start the clock and go right away to the first toss-up for either team. In this allegorical short story, a young man wakes up in the forest alone and returns to his town, unsure of his experience, and right away to Westview. Uh, young Goodman Brown. That's correct, yes. For your bonus questions, name the author of these Pulitzer-winning biographies. One, No Ordinary Time, Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt. Two, John Adams. And three, Angela's Ashes. What? Okay, John. Profiles and pros and pictures. Okay. No. <laughs> no. No. Okay. We'll go to a scene for the answers, oh, please. Kennedy for all answers. Pardon me? Huh? Kennedy for all answers? No, I'm sorry. Uh, Doris Kearns Goodwin, David McCullough, and Frank McCourt would have been those answers. Let's go to the next toss. A poem of the William McKinley Presidential Library. This municipality is where McKinley built his career as a lawyer, congressman, governor, and eventually president. Visitors at this place can also go to the Football Hall of Fame in this city. And we go to Olympian. Canton. That's correct. And for your bonus, identify the state that borders both of the states in the following pairs. One, Alabama and Louisiana. Two, Alabama and South Carolina. And three, Wisconsin and Kentucky. All right, we'll go to Thomas on this uh, side. Defer to Kyle. Okay, Kyle. Mississippi, Florida, Illinois. Mississippi and Illinois are correct for three points. Georgia would have been that second one. This is a computation toss-up. Solve for x in the, following, in the following equation. If y equals 14 will be our premise. 3x plus 7y equals 119. And we go to Westview. 18? No, I'm sorry. Let me repeat the question for you, Olympian. Solve for x in the following equation if y equals 14. 3x plus 7y equals 119. Right away, back to Olympian. 7? Yes, 7 is right. So for your bonus, factor each of the following algebraic expressions completely. 1, x squared minus 64 
2 is x squared plus 6x plus 9, and 3 is x squared plus 5xy plus 4y squared. Okay, and Thomas, please. Defer to Courtney. Courtney. For number one, we have uh, quantity x minus 8, uh, quantity x plus 8. For number two, we have x plus 3 squared. And for number three, we have x plus 2y. One and two are correct for three points. That last one would have been x plus y quantity times quantity x plus 4y. Thank you. And we'll go to the next toss-up. During the chem chemical reactions, this substance may float if its density is lighter than the solution. What word, beginning with the letter P, is the name for an insoluble substance to Olympian? Precipitin? Yes, sir. Please name these chemical elements. One, the lightest of the alkali metals. It's so soft that it can be cut with a sharp knife. Two, the element on which the organic chemistry branch is focused. And three, the metal whose principal ore is bauxite. Read time. Defer yes. to German. In order, beryllium, carbon, aluminum. The second two are correct for three points. Lithium would have been that first one. And we'll continue. Geoffrey Chaucer based his Canterbury Tales on this type of trip to provide and to Westview. Pilgrimage? Pilgrimage, yes. And for your bonus, the prefix mono means one. Use the following clues to identify these words that begin with the mono prefix. A, a person's initials that have been arranged in an artistic design and placed on stationery or clothing. Two, the condition of having complete control of something or no competition. And three, a large block of stone or statue that has been carved from a large stone. We have our answers. Yes. For the first one, we have monogram. For the second one, we have monopoly. And for the third one, we have monolith. Yes, those are all correct for five points. For other team, known as the George Washington of South America, right away to Olympian. From Bolivar? Yes, that's right. For your bonus, fill in the correct titles for the husband, sons, and grandsons of Queen Elizabeth II. One, Prince Philip, Duke of blank. Two, Prince Charles, Prince of blank. And three, Prince Andrew, Duke of blank. Thomas, we'll go to you. Wales for all three. Well, that is right for the second one, so that's one point. Edinburgh would, uh, Duke of Edinburgh would be Prince Philip, and York would have been for Andrew. Thank you. Back to the toss-ups. Who was the iconic artist whose paintings ca called the Four Freedoms were reproduced for four consecutive weeks? Westview, please. Norman Rockwell? Yes, that's right. Please identify these styles of medieval art based on the descriptions I give you. One, this style was popular in Eastern Europe and the Near East, although very colorful, it used uneventful and unlifelike figures to represent religious ideas. Two, this style developed in Northern Europe, became famous for its illuminations or illustrations for Bibles. And three, this style was common in Western Europe from 1000 to 1100. It's known for its beautiful bright colored frescoes on the walls of churches. Okay. Uh, we have our answers. Yes, please. For the first one, we have icon. The second one, we have manuscript. And the third one, we have Romanesque. Romanesque is correct for one. Byzantine and insular or Celtic would have been correct for number two. The various different shades of blue or brown eyes that exist are an example of this type of genetic trait. This condition occurs when a group of gene pairs act together. Olympian? Polygenic? Yes, that's right. And let's answer these questions about animal toes. How many toes does a hippopotamus have on each foot? To what animal spends a lot of time hanging upside down in trees in Central and South America and may have two toes or three toes on its forelimbs depending on the species? And three, what large running bird has only two toes compared to the three found in other rarities? <laughs> oh, 
wait time. Yes. In order, we have four, sloth, and ostrich. All are correct. Five <laughs> points for you. This term describes stocks that continue to pay dividends even in tough... <coughs> right away to Olympian. Blue chip? Yes, that's right. And for your bonus, identify these three-word terms that relate to measurements of economic health. One, this term for the total output of goods and services produced by labor and property owned within a country. It's abbreviated GDP. To the term for total, total dollar value of goods and services provided by a nation, including goods and services produced abroad by its citizens and companies, and this is abbreviated GNP. And three, the means of inflation represented by change in price over a period of time of some 400 specific retail goods and services used by the average urban household. We call this CPI. Thomas, please. Defer to Kyle. Kyle. Gross domestic product, gross national product, consumer price index. Yes, that's right. Five points. And this is computation. In terms of pi, what is the area of a circle inscribed in a regular dodecagon with an apothem 13? 13 meters long. We go to Westview. 169 pi. Yes, that's nice. right. And for your bonus, identify these geometry terms after hearing the first letter of the term and a brief definition. One. S, two or more lines that do not intersect and are not parallel. Q. Two, I, an angle formed by two chords and vertex that lies on the chords. And A, a line segment joining the center of a regular polygon to midpoint of a side. Chord. Okay. We have our answers. Yes, please. For one, we have skew. For two, we have inscribed. And for three, we have altitude. One and two are correct for three points. You were right when I heard you say apothem. It would have been apothem. For the next to uh, toss-up, we go to give the name for this astronomical unit of distance that is equivalent to 3.2 to Olympian, please. Parsec. Yes, sir, parsec. Please identify these small solar system bodies for your bonus. One similar to asteroids in size and to comets in composition, mainly revolving around the sun between the orbits of Jupiter and Neptune. The first known member of this group is Chiron. Next, a minor planet or neutral satellite found orbiting another planet's moons or Lagargian points, a pair of gravitationally stable points. And three abbreviated as KBOs, these small bodies are found in a region of the solar system beyond the orbit of Neptune. The largest of these is Pluto. All right, we go to Thomas. Okay, in order, oh, defer to German. <laughs> okay, German. <laughs> in order, dwarf planet, Lagrange points, and Cubanos. No, I'm sorry, uh, Centaur, Trojan, Trojan asteroid or Trojan moon, and then Kupier belt objects would have been that last one. Let's go to the next toss-up for both teams. This literary character is famous for his quote, it is a far better thing that I do and we go to Westview. Sydney Carton. Yes, that's right. And for your bonus, answer these questions about Shakespeare's life. That One, in what country was he born? Two, what was the name of the theater at which many of his plays oh, no, were blood, performed? Blood, blood. And what was Shakespeare's father's profession? Oh, wasn't he like a school? No, Shoemaker or Shoemaker something? Okay, Shoemaker. Or, so do you know, you know I was, I'm just two of the globe here. Old globe, old globe, old globe. Old globe, old globe. Okay. Old globe. No, it's no, it's old. Okay. Old. Do you have an answer? Oh. Yes, please. For the first, we have England. For the second, we have Old Globe. And for the third, we have Shoemaker. Uh, judges on number two. So I'm sorry, only one is correct, England. It's the Globe Theater. The Old Globe's here in San Diego. He was a tanner, so that's not a shoemaker. For other team, give the name for the, for the circumstance of the law of signs that causes two possible, we go to Westview. Ambiguous case. Yes. And for your bonus, follow the y value of the global, find the y value of the global maxima of the following oscill oscillating functions. One, y equals two sine x. Two, y equals two sine x cosine x. And three, y equals sine x plus cosine x. Two sine two 
So the third one, one, two, the third one, two. Oh, the second one's one, two. The second okay. one's one. Okay. The second one's two. The second one's two. Yeah. The second one's two. Yeah. Which is, is, is two that, Wait, wait. No, it's one. I mean, time is two. It's one. one. The third is one. Okay. No, because it maxes out of it maxes out of one. Okay. All right, and we go to a scene. Okay, for the first we have uh, two, for the second we have one, and for the third we have root two. Yes, those are all correct. And we'll go to the next toss up. Who was the politician who was our first Jewish vice presidential candidate to Westview? Brandeis. No, I'm sorry. Let me repeat that for you, Olympian. Who was the politician who was our first Jewish vice presidential candidate when he was Al Gore's running mate in 2000? Olympian. Lieberman? Yes, that's right. And for your bonus, the legislature of a country is the lawmaking body that has the power to make and pass laws. Identify the name given to the national legislatures of each of the following countries. One is the United States, two is Great Britain, and three is Spain. And Thomas, please. In order, we have Congress, Parliament, and Parliament. The first two are correct. For three points, General Courts would be the name for Spain. And for the next toss-up, these units are electric or electronic devices that transform energy from one manifestation to another. In other words, they convert input energy into output energy. What is the scientific term used for such items as microphones, Geiger meters, and pressure sensors? Those are called transducers. These particles are a specific type of gauge bosons that have no charge or mass. I'm sorry, I'm going to, I'm going to go to the, a different question. This is computation. Calculate the percentage of flour in a mixture that contains 15 grams of flour, 6 grams of salt, and 19 grams of sugar. Westview. Westview. Uh. Sorry, we'll have to go to Olympian. Calculate the percentage of flour in a mixture that contains 15 grams of flour, 6 grams of salt, 19 grams of sugar. That answer would be 37.5. And we'll go to the next. We're going to take a quick time out, and we'll be right back. Westview High School, a part of the Poway Unified School District, serves the communities of Rancho Penasquitos and Torrey Highlands. The school, established in 2002, recently celebrated its 10th anniversary. Westview currently serves a population of approximately 2,400 students. While the school is known for the high quality of its academic and athletic programs, it also hosts thriving performing arts and fine arts programs. Hi, my name is Lucha Yang. I'm currently a student at Westview High School, and this is my second year being a part of the Academic League team. This year, we have 45 students on the freshman, junior varsity, and varsity teams. We hold weekly practices for the teams to help expand their knowledge and prepare for upcoming matches. The most amazing aspect about Academic League is that it sets up an environment where you're surrounded by people who are just as interested in learning new things as you are, and it really makes you more aware of what's going around you and in the world. Thank you. Back. We're back after a brief timeout. The score is Olympian High School 47, Westview 30. We still have almost 15 minutes left. We're going to keep going in just a minute, but Olympian has added some new players, and we'll call on their team captain, Thomas, to introduce them to us. Uh, to my right, we have sophomore Federico Urena, and to my left, we have junior Diego D'Alba. We welcome both of you, and we'll start the clock and keep going. Consider the following sentence. If you ate it, you probably love it. What is the term used for the main clause in a conditional sentence that is evidenced by the phrase, you'd probably love it? That's called an apodosis. Let's keep going. Name the colonial Dutch governor who purchased Manhattan from the Indians. To Olympian. He didn't ring in. Let's stop the clock for just a moment. 
And we'll take a quick time out while we deal with our technical problems here. Here at Olympia High School, our motto is where champions are made. And our academic decathlon and our academic league teams live by that motto every day. Every school in our district has an academic decathlon and an academic league team, but what we do here is just a little bit different. We've been very successful over the years. We've won championships, we've won awards, we've won medals, but most importantly, we've helped kids get ready for college. Kids who travel through the academic decathlon and academic league programs go on to college and they're successful in college. This is Giovanna Robledo. She's also a senior Olympian high school and she got admitted to Harvard. So, Giovanna, tell us, what is the goal of Olympian High School? Um, well, the goal of Olympian High School is to make sure that every student here is eligible and ready to succeed in a four-year university or college. And we're going to start again. We have 14 minutes and 11 seconds left. We'll start the clock and give out a toss-up. This French writer was known for his contributions to 19th century realism, his novel about an adulterous woman whose marriage did not meet to Westby, please. Flaubert. Yes, Flaubert is right. Many prominent female authors have written under a different name from their own. Can you identify each author's pseudonym given the title of the work? One, Jane Eyre. Two, The Fountainhead. And three, the right mill there. on the floss. We have our answers. Yes, please. For the first one, we have Charlotte Bronte. For the second one, we have Ayn Rand. And for the third one, we have George Eliot. Two and three are correct for three points. Bell would have been that first answer. Thank you. Back to the toss-ups. What was the decision that declared state laws establishing separate right away to Westview? Plessy versus Ferguson? No, I'm sorry. Let me repeat that for you, Olympian. What was the decision that declared state laws establishing separate public schools for black and white students unconstitutional? Now to Olympian. Brown versus Board of Education? Yes, that's right. So for your bonus, in the United States, there are six senior military colleges that offer ROTC programs. They require all male students to take courses in military training. Identify four of these colleges that are located in the following cities and states. One, Charleston, South Carolina. Two, Lexington, Virginia. Three, College Station, Texas. And we go to Thomas. In order, we have University of South Carolina, uh, Virginia Military Institute, and Texas A&M. Two and three are correct. For three points, the Citadel would have been that first one. And back to the toss-ups. What is the smaller of the two odd numbers that have a sum of 50 and a product of 609? To Westview. 17. No, I'm sorry. Let me repeat that for you, Olympian. What is the smaller of the two odd numbers that have a sum of 50 and a product of 609? And now we go to Olympian. 19. Nope, close, 21 on that one. Let's keep going. What is the geographic zone that contains the intertidal zone but typically, typically extends further to C? To Westview. Literal? Yes, that's right. 
For your bonus, identify the type of real or mythical animal that is represented by each of these star constellations. One, Cygnus. Two, Leo. Three, Lepus. What, can you repeat the third one, please? Yes, L-E-P-U-S, Lepus. That's Fox? I mean, you're Wolf. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's the second one? Second one was Leo, right? That's, that's fine. Leo, my answer. Fine. Okay. And the first one was Cygnus. So swan. Okay. Do we have our answers? Yes, please. For the first, we have Swan. For the second, we have Lion. And for the third, we have Wolf. One and two are correct. For three points again, Rabbit or Hare would have been that last one. This percussion instrument, also known as the Cuban Trombadora, is a drum that stretches over 30 inches, and it's often mounted on a rack or stand larger than its bongo counterparts, which is the name. What is the name of the single head drum played with fingers and the palms of the hands? To Westview. Tambourine. No, I'm sorry. I'll repeat that again for you, Olympian. This percussion instrument, also known as the Cuban Tumbadora, is a drum that stretches over 30 inches and is off, often mounted on a rack or stand and it's larger than its bongo counterpart. What is the name of the single-headed drum played with fingers in the palm of the hands? Conga. Conga drum. For either team, now who is the goddess whose Roman counterpart is Ceres? To Westview. Demeter. Yes. <laughs> you will be given the name of a mythological Greek woman. Please identify the husband of the following females. One, Hera. Two, Eurydice. Three, Amphitrace. And, and that's it. Okay, we have our answers. Yes, please. For the first, we have Zeus. For the second, we have Orpheus. And for the third, we have Poseidon. Those are all correct for five points. For either team, now John Adams and this friendly political rival, we go to Westview. Thomas Jefferson? Yes. <laughs> for your bonus, what famous American inventor did, who did work with the hearing impaired, advised Helen's father to seek help at Boston's Perkins Institute for the Blind, where he was introduced to Ann Sullivan. To what college did Helen attend, becoming the first deaf blind person on earth to get a, to, excuse me, to earn a bachelor's degree? And three, what famous American author paid for her college education? Yeah. Yeah. So Miss Bell. Yeah. Second is what college, and then the third one is what college? Maybe in the Northeast, right? No, no. Silly. Wait. Silly. Yeah. Silly. Okay. What's the name? Say Barnard. Barnard. Okay. That sounds right. Barnard. Everyone say that for who was your teacher's name? Alan. Alan. For the yoga. All right, and we'll go to a scene. Different Alan. Alan. Number one, we have Bell. Number two, we have Barnard. Number three, we have Santa Benes. No, I'm sorry. Edison, Thomas Edison, Radcliffe, and Mark Twain, Samuel Clemens would have been that answer. Time out, Olympian. We'll be right back. <laughs> We're back after a brief timeout. We still have eight minutes and 15 seconds left. Our score is very close, Olympian 53, Westview 50. There are some changes here at Olympian. Thomas, please tell us who you've brought in. Uh, to my right, we have junior Brandon Hazelwood. To my left, we have senior German Soto. And to my far left, we have junior Jordan Miles. Welcome to all three of you. Welcome back, German. And we'll start the clock and keep going. An airplane accelerates down a runway at five meters per second squared for 20 seconds until it finally lifts off. What is the distance traveled by the plane before takeoff? To Olympian. 100 meters. No, I'm sorry. Let me repeat that for you. Westview. An airplane accelerates down a runway at 5 meters per second squared for 20 seconds until it finally takes off. What is the distance traveled by the plane before takeoff? Now to Westview. 1,000 meters. 1,000 units? Meters? Meters, yes. 1,000 meters is correct. Please identify these physics terms, physics terms that all begin with the first letter of the alphabet. One, the measure in a wave from the resting position to the crest. Two, unit of length equal to the average distance from the Earth to the Sun. And three, flow of electrical charge that periodically reverses directions. Yes, flow of electric charge that periodically reverses directions. What was that? Oh, oh yeah, alternating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or okay. We have our answers. Yes, please. For the first, we have amplitude. For the second, we have astronomical unit, and for the third, we have alternating current. Those are all correct for five points, and we'll continue. A rectangular piece of paper measures four inches length 
and three inches in width. A hole in the shape of an isosceles triangle is cut out of the paper. After the hole is cut, the area of the remaining paper is 10 square inches. What is the hypotenuse of the triangular hole? That answer is 2 root 2 inches. Popular during at the height of Europe's imperial power, this economic policy was designed to Westview. Mercantilism? Yes, that's nice. right. Please identify these business terms for your bonus. Any possession that has value in an exchange. Two, an adjective for any investor who thinks the market will rise. And three, the general term for any food, metal, or other physical substance that investors buy or sell. <laughs> Money, money, money. Are you sure about asset? I said speculator. I think asset. Asset for the first one. Asset? Is it bull is definitely bull market. Yeah, bull market. Bull market. Bull. Yeah, it's asset. Yeah. Okay, we have answers. I see. For the first, we have asset. For the second, we have bull. And for the third, we have commodity. Yes, all of those are correct. Five points, please. Currently on display at the at display of the British Museum, by what name do we know this collection of relief sculptures and architectural forms from the Parthenon that a British to Westview. Eglidgen Marbles. Would you repeat, please? Eglidgen Marbles. Uh, judges. All right, I'm going to repeat that for you over here. Olympian. Currently on display at the British Museum, by what name do we know this collection of relief sculptures and architectural forms from the Parthenon that a British ambassador acquired in Athens and sold to Parliament in the early 1800s? <gasps> That answer, Elgin marbles, Elgin marbles. Next, mushrooms and other fungi are composed of many thousands of these thread-like structures to Olympian. I think. Yes, that's right. And for your bonus, identify the following parts of a, of a cell. If you're correct, all of your answers will begin with the same letter. One, an organized structure of DNA and protein found in cell that contains genes. Two, this jelly-like substance forms the majority of the cell volume. And three, this organelle contains a green pigment that performs photosynthesis in plants. Uh, wave time. In order, we have chromosome, cytoplasm, and chloroplast. All of those are correct for five points. And we'll go to the next toss-up, which is a quick one. Spell arterial sclerosis to Olympian. A-R-T-E-R-I-A-L. S C E L R O S I S. I'm sorry, no, and I'll repeat that. Can you spell arterial sclerosis? And now to Westview. A R T E R I O S C L E R O S I S. Yes, that is correct. And for your bonus, let's combine science and spelling. Spell the following words related to single celled organisms one, amoeba, two, sporozoan, and three, flagellum. I got that. I got the I got, can you repeat the second one, please? Yes. Sporozoan. Sporozoan. Yeah, I think it's A. It's A. It's an A. It's an A. It's an A. You guys agree about it? Is everything. Is that an A? That's a so, yes. Or a. All right, and we'll go to a scene. Defer to Raj. Raj. For the first one, we have A M O E B A. For the second one, we have S. P O R A Z O A N. For the third one, we have F L A G E L L U M. One and three are correct for three points. Spor, oh, uh, there's two misspelling. S P O R O Z O A N. Three O's in that one. Sorry about that. Computation is the next toss up. Complete the following Pythagorean identity. One plus cosecant squared theta equals blank. And we go to Westview. Cotangents squared theta. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your bonus. Triangle ABC has the following vertices. A at 0, 0, B at negative 7, 0, and C at negative 7, uh, negative 24. Identify the following with respect to angle C. 1, sine of angle C. 2, tangent of angle C. And 3, secant of angle C. Equals C. Wait, what? C is up, up, up. Wait, it doesn't matter. It's 24 and 7. Tangent is opposite over... It says 25. 25 is the what is it? Is no, it 18? Yeah, but it's fine. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Are you doing? I don't know. I don't understand. 720. All right, and we go to a scene. Defer to Ashwin. Yes. First one, we have 7 over 25. The second one, we have 7 over 24. And the last, we have 24 over 25. 
Uh, number two is correct for one point. The first was correct, but it needed to be a negative, and the same with the last. The, the numbers were correct. Time for the out, timeout, Olympian. Time we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. We've had a few technical problems, but they've been solved. We still have almost two minutes left, and our score is still 59 to 75. We're going to start that clock again, and we're going to keep going. All right. Though overshadowed by other titles that have since become more popular, this was Mark Twain's best-selling work during his lifetime. It began as a series of travel letters written mainly for Alta California, which is a San Francisco paper. What's the title of the book, which chronicles his pleasure cruise on board a chartered vessel through Europe and the Holy Land? to Westview. Innocence Abroad. That's right, yeah. Innocence Abroad. And for your bonus, give the title of these books by Sal Bello. One, a 47-year-old man named Moses suffers a midlife crisis. Two, a writer who values artistic integrity and his protege, Charlie, uh, looks like Citrin, who is a commercial success. And three, and every man's life is depicted from his youth into manhood. He drifts in and out of jobs, locations, and relationships with such women as Thea, a Greek hotel maid, and Stella, whom he marries. That's the third one. Okay. Do you know any others? I don't know. Any. Okay, I don't know any. No, that's Sal Bella. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, we have our answer. Yes, please. Adventures Wait, of Augie March for all of them. Uh, let's see. Augie March is n the answer for number three, and that would be one point Herzog and... Humboldt's gift would have been the next one, and let's keep going. These groups of atoms were once referred to as radicals or molecular ions. What is the term for a stable group of atoms that are convalently bonded, have either a, and we go to Olympian. Mole mo molecule? I'm sorry, say it again. Molecule? No, I'm sorry. Let me repeat that for you, Westview. There are a group of atoms that were referred to as radicals or molecular ions. What is the term for a stable group of atoms that are covalently bonded, have either a positive or, or a negative charge, and behave as a single unit in many chemical reactions? And now we go to Westview. Why again? Those are actually polyatomic ions. This opera by Richard Wagner tells the story taken from an old legend about a ship's captain to Olympian, please. The Flying Dutchman. The Flying Dutchman. And identify, for your bonus, identify the author of each of these plays. One, The Iceman Cometh. Two, The Importance of Being Earnest. And three, Rosencrantz and Gilderstern are dead. The second one is Wild and the last one is Sovereign. We have time. Defer yes. to Jordan. Thomas, go ahead, Jordan. Uh, for the first, we have O'Neill. For the second, we have Wild. For the third, we have Stoppard. And those are all perfectly correct for three points. And Clark, what a match. We'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Mark. Coaches, will you please join me in front of your respective teams? It was an exciting match. Always tough when you get to this point in the, in the season, isn't it? Well, yes, it is. And I want to congratulate Westview. They're a great team. Um, you know, I would have liked, obviously, a different kind of format today, but I was really, really pleased with the competition. Uh, I know they have a great team. I'm really proud of these guys being three-time uh, representatives of the South Bay, and uh, I think, you know, they fought all the way to the end. I, I can't be disappointed in their effort today. They were terrific. It was excellent. Here is your San Diego County Academic League Championship semifinalist. Good luck to you in the future. I'm sure we'll see you again. Let, let's step over here in front of your team because I'm going to ask him to stand here in just a minute. Jane, I'm sorry, here, I don't know where here you. Oh, that's fine. I'll just, I'll just move you around. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. You, Thank you, you. You managed to pull this off basically the same thing you did last year for the championship match. Now, your team kind of starts out and then sort of picks up momentum. Is that typical or was that just this match? No, that's very typical. They are a little bit uh, kind of uh, laid back in the beginning and then once they get on a roll then they really kind of take off okay. and they beat well, off each other. You will be competing for the championship uh, coming up match after next. We'll look forward to that. Good I luck look to you. To it. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you soon for more Academic League action right here on ITV. Students, stand.